Raina? Okay. So next up is Raina talking about Astron's open source IP contributions. Take it away. Thank yeah, you. thanks. So yeah, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, I would like to give you some insight in the open source work of Astron related to FPGAs. Uh, my name is Renier and I work as an FPGA engineer at Astron. Uh, so luckily we had a uh, very good introduction by Stefan. Thank you, Stefan. And I'd like to elaborate a little bit more on uh, our usage of FPGAs here. <coughs> so in this uh, top right picture we see the core of uh, our Lofer telescope again. And I would like to use that as an example on a, a typical ap application on where we use FPGAs. Um, in the bottom right pictures we see a, the insides of a cabinet, which is uh, the central part of each uh, station. And that hosts uh, several server racks and uh, an rich one server, server rack which contains an, uh, uh, what we call a sub rack for the digital processing done at the station. And that's where we uh, use FPGAs. Um, zooming into that, uh, in the picture you see the sub rack in a uh, testing environment. And in the uh, bottom left we see an exploded view of what's uh, contained in this sub rack. Uh, at the back we see uh, the receiver units for connecting antennas. Uh, these receiver units are connected to a midplane in the middle of the sub rack. And on the other end we have the electronics uh, the digital electronics and the power supplies. So we have two so power supply boards, uh, two digital processing platforms in which we use uh, unit board two for our uh, upgrading upgrade of the Lofer telescope, which we're currently working on, um, and a uh, clock board. Um, a little bit more detail on these. Uh, so the receiver units is basically an ADC with uh, some filtering on it, and these are specialized uh, for the antennas we uh, use in the field. Uh, the power boards supply very clean power to all the electronics. And then the Uniboard 2 is the, uh, the main uh, processing uh, part of, um, of a ship rack. And this uh, particular board is, uh, uh, well, the successor of Uniboard 1, Uniboard 2. And it contains uh, four uh, high-end ARIA-10 uh, FPGAs. And we use that as a filter bank, uh, a station beamformer, and a station correlator. And of course, then the clock board used for uh, clock generation and distribution. And uh, in this case, it's also used to translate uh, a uh, OPCOA protocol to all the onboard peripherals. And on to uh, more the main topic of this talk. Uh, and for that, I would like to introduce uh, uh, well the RTSD team uh, at Astron. RTSD stands for Real-Time Systems Development. And uh, we are responsible for the VHDL development uh, for our radio telescope applications. And additionally, we also uh, develop tooling for that to make our life easier. Uh, another, another nice picture of the the uniboards uh, after production. Um, next up, <coughs> I would like to tell you uh, what a typical FPGA application for us looks like. And that's basically uh, uh, shown here in this high level uh, example. So first we start uh, with either a custom build like the uniboard 2 or an off the shelf FPGA platform which has the required I.O. for our application. Then we build some kind of logic around those IOs to uh, provide a standard interface. And then we identify uh, two main data paths. The first one is the streaming data path, which uh, uh, has some continuous data stream coming in, uh, typically through ADCs or from ADCs. And then uh, several data movement and processing is applied to this data. And then it streams out again continuously, um, typically over uh, wideband Ethernet. The other data path we identify is the uh, memory mapped control interface, uh, which is used to uh, read and write parameters throughout the whole uh, processing pipeline uh, in, F in our FPGA applications. And then an overview of uh, uh, what we've built. Um, so uh, during implementation, we'd like to be able to reuse our components, of course. And we do that making it more generic and uh, thoroughly uh, testing them and then uh, keeping it in our libraries. 
And throughout the years, we uh, really built some, well, quite an extensive library. And we, uh, uh, for structure, we divided this in several categories, and I would like to explain that. Uh, so from bottom to top, we have the IP category, which contains uh, uh, wrappers around uh, proprietary IP from Xilinx or Intel or whatever. And it, uh, uh, we use that to provide a more standard interface, such that uh, every variant of that IP for different FPGAs, for example, have all the same outgoing interface, or at least similar. And that's used by the next uh, category of libraries, which is the technology lab, uh, category, which contains uh, libraries um, that makes sure that uh, we can use uh, one component that is able to select the desired underlying IP based on the platform you compile for. Uh, <clears throat> in the case of uh, for, for example, the tech DDR component, uh, we can either select the DDR3 or DDR4, but at a higher level, it's uh, abstracted away, so that makes life easier. Then we have the base category, which uh, hosts the data movement and uh, commonly used functions or packages. And the I.O. library is everything around uh, I.O., uh, either directly interfacing with an FPGA pin or through an IP. Uh, the DSP category hosts all our uh, DSP functions like the Beamformer or the Wideband Polyphos Field Bank or Correlator, etc. And then at the top level we have our Applications category, which, is, uh, which are all the top level applications we built. Uh, so that's basically uh, yeah, the, the top of our uh, libraries. So what can you expect when you will look at our code? Um, we always strive to follow this design pattern. It's based on the Geisler method, so splitting uh, into two processes. And we uh, typically have a uh, streaming data through it, going from sync in to source out. And that's uh, built up of uh, PHDL records in our case. And it contains, uh, well, of course, the data and some other control signals like uh, valid or start of packet very similar to Arch for Streaming or uh, 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 what's called uh, the Intel variant, Avalon Streaming. And then the, the other way, we have the source in to sync out, which is the, uh, the back pressure signal. Uh, we implement our, all our functionality in the uh, combinatorial process, and we store our, the, all the variables and the state of it into uh, also a feed cell record which ends up in one signal we can feed to a uh, register and then uh, that provides us with, the, in this case, the queue state. Uh, well, to, uh, to have the previous state of our uh, uh, function. And then the output of the function is fed into a pipeline in which we can decide what the overall latency of our uh, functionality is. And now a bit on our uh, tooling. So we've built our own set of scripts, which we call the Radio HDL. And it provides us, uh, uh, well, with a more, uh, it, it speeds up our development and it provides us with a uniform and automated way of building and simulating HTL for FPGAs. An example what it can do is automatically build uh, Vivado or Quartus of Modelsim or any underlying tool you can uh, add uh, project for. And it will build, will build all the, the project files for every library or application that's in our repository. Another thing it does is uh, fully compile a design, uh, which you can uh, uh, simply put in one command and it will uh, synthesize a design you desire for a certain platform. And it will figure out all the files it has to include and uh, all the processes it has to do. And it's also including a fully automated uh, generation of a register map. Uh, which we call the tool, it's called Arx, Automatic Register Generation System. So, uh, why does it work? Well, it works because we provide uh, config files in each of our libraries. For HTL, we have HTL lib config files, which you see an example in the top right. And that contains the basic things like the name and the dependencies or design files or uh, attachments files. So, in this example, uh, the dependencies is the common library and the data path or DP library. 
and the, uh, it hosts uh, two design files and uh, test bench files. The other type of the config files we use uh, is for that uh, automatic registration, register uh, generation system. And that's uh, uh, done in YAML files, which uh, we have two variations of, the peripheral and the FPGA. The peripheral YAML file is uh, to describe the memory map of a single component. And then the FPGA YAML file is to describe uh, the memory map of uh, a top-level design, and that can then uh, instantiate the underlying components you briefly, previously defined. Um, we keep our, uh, we ensure the uh, reliability of our code using regression tests. Um, we do simulations of all of our test engines every night, and we also do a, a compilation or synthesis of all of the current designs we use every weekend, and we do, uh, so we have a select few of those designs that we uh, fully automatically uh, run on a dedicated setup, uh, which has a host PC that executes uh, several tests to, uh, well, to ensure that uh, the whole system is uh, still working as it should after changes. And then a few things uh, on what we are still working on. Um, so we'd like to have some kind of feed gel because we're mostly using feed gel, feed gel linting and an uh, automatic formatter or fixing. And we're currently working on a tool that, uh, that does that. And we also uh, would like to integrate all of the tooling in uh, GitLab CSCD to, uh, well, to ensure uh, more integrated with uh, our repositories. Of course, uh, where to find it? Uh, well, it's very easily at git.astron.nl slash rtsd, and you'll find there uh, four repositories. The, uh, the top one, the operative MATLAB, is uh, some application-specific MATLAB simulation code, uh, so it might not really be interesting. But the, uh, we have, of course, the code for our uh, automatic register generation system, and the, uh, uh, all of our HGL uh, code is hosted in the HGL repository. And, of course, the code for all of our tooling, uh, which can be found in the Radio HTL uh, repository. So, uh, that's it. Are there any questions? Thanks, Reina. Uh, yep. Question yeah, from the front. Hi. Uh, very nice. I like that you have everything organized. Uh, I have basically two or one and a half questions. So the first question, I've noticed that you abstract streaming interfaces in the records in VHDL, which Correct. is also what we have done in our group in some project. But I mean, uh, I think in the Quartus, the, you cannot constrain the, like you cannot have unconstrained signals in the record. So how did you deal with that? Um, well, we. I've, I'm okay, never I'll check no, your code. Yeah, it's I'm fine. Yeah. Not, not really sure. And the other thing, maybe I didn't get it. Uh, sorry for that, but HDL lib config, it's like your own config file? Yeah, correct. Uh, I think there's like HDL make, which does a similar thing dependency solving and building like projects. Oh, so did you know about it? Do you consider it? Oh, no, okay. not, not heard of it, but I will okay. remember it. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's uh, made by CERN. HDL make. HDL make, yeah. It okay. generates a make file. But it's, it seems very similar, even the way you wrote it. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Great. great. Thanks. Uh, thank you for your presentation and making uh, all the code available in public, but uh, two simple questions. Why not GitHub? And oh, yeah, we, uh, well, we like to host our own server, so that's basically it, so we have all uh, uh, the power over it, let's say. Okay. It's not and what licenses are you using to really, uh, for your code? Apache 2. Mm -hmm. yeah, good. Thank you. Detecting a theme that people are like less happy with GitHub these days after it's sold <laughs> out, right? Um, you mentioned R 
like uh, your colleague mentioned, going from one vendor to another, right? Uh, how much effort do you estimate? You already put effort in abstracting the IPs, but how much effort is there in the project to keep those uh, wrappers up to date with for multiple vendors? Mm. Uh, well, it takes some effort, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, basically, for every IP, you will have to make a, a wrapper again, but it's very similar. So, it's uh, you can automate the process for uh, up until a certain point, and then after that, uh, uh, well, it needs some intervention to uh, to ensure that the, the interfaces are correct. But it's it's yeah, it's relatively simple. Work. So within the project, it's only a small part of the work. Um, yeah, okay. yeah, but I think it's also also to do that we do very large projects. Okay. So yeah, it might be uh, uh, we do um, uh, have to think about whether we're going to do it for smaller projects. So it is a uh, uh, an intensive task to do. Thank you. All right, everybody, let's thank the speaker again. Cheers, Rainer. <laughs>